Hello everyone, this is Spencer Powell, and I'm going to do something I haven't done before, which is a product unboxing and review. That's not true in either. I've done several unboxings, but this time I'm going to review it as well. Um, um, and the reason I'm doing this is because uh, I'm apparently one of the first people to get this product, or at least one of the first people to be willing to review it, because I haven't seen any others online as of yet. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at it. What I've got here is the Cue Ball Plus. Uh, the plus is important, it's a bit different than the standard cue ball. Um, and it's a really interesting uh, concept uh, because it's a, a, a microphone in a dodgeball, so you can throw it around the room to do classes or conferences or whatever. Apparently very popular with teachers to use in classrooms. I am not a teacher. Uh, I am a pro professional sound engineer. I've been paid for it, so I guess I can say I'm a professional sound engineer, so that's kind of the the angle that I'm coming from as I review this, but let's take a look first at what's in the box. Now, I've had this for a while. I have taken it out and played with it, um, but I've also put it back so you can kind of get an idea of what comes in the box initially. Um, well packaged, uh, good packing material, but here is pretty much the brains, the, the important bits of the operation here. You have your pack here, which is the microphone, that's the body pack. Here's your receiver. Various cords you need to plug everything in. We'll go through all of those in a second. Uh, but the exciting and interesting bit is underneath the foam, which was not this difficult to get out last time I tried this. There it goes. And it's the actual uh, dodgeball housing itself. So let me take that out so you can get a better look at it. All right, so it took me a little bit to get the ball out of the box, so I put a bit of a cut there, but here is the uh, the ball itself, the, the foam dodgeball. It, it is made of foam rather than the old rubber dodgeballs that would break your nose any time you got hit with them. It is branded cue ball there on the top. Can you see that? Yes, you can. And uh, the uh, windscreen here is what pops out to give you access to the, the cradle, basically, that holds the microphone and uh, the microphone and body pack they're one thing in fact let's take a look at that here um, here's your microphone and body pack uh, well the microphone attached to the body pack that connects to you uh, there's a button there for uh, your power and your mute on the side is the USB charging it does have a built-in internal battery so you can't change the battery but you can charge it with the USB adapter there um, on this side, you have buttons for volume control and also high, low power switch. We'll talk more about that in a second. And a s removable silicone cap. So if that gets dirty, or I guess if you want to change the color, they don't have other colors available yet. Maybe in the future, here's hoping. Uh, let's look at the, um, the receiver now. Here is the receiver branded with the company logo, which is Peak, P-E-E-Q. Uh, and on the front, we have uh, various buttons, and it's probably not going to focus on this, but oh well. Um, so going from this side, we have a power indicator. Then because this is the QL Plus, uh, this receiver can accept two microphones. So there's indicators for both microphones there, one and two. Uh, then there is a uh, power button, and then a mute switch, and a mute indicator on the far side. So you can mute from the box as well. On the back side is a USB in, uh, that's your primary power, and then two 3.5 millimeter jacks, one for audio in and one for audio out. Um, and then various uh, cords come with it. Uh, there's, of course, just your standard 3.5 millimeter male end-to-end uh, -end adapter for plugging it into whatever you need to. Um, additionally, it has a... a a wall adapter for USB, just a little wall wart here, uh, AC adapter, uh, cheap Chinese something, I think it's not branded, um, and then a couple of uh, USB uh, connectors to charge the, to both connect the base and to charge the uh, unit at the same time, so you don't have to swap the cable if you don't want to. Um, so that is everything that comes in the box. I'm really quickly going to take a moment, we're going to cut again, and I'm going to take a moment and get this set up and plugged in to, um, to my sound system. I, I have a nice mixer board. And here we are after the cut. Uh, it's been several minutes for me because, well, why don't I just show you why? Um, let's really quickly, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring up the volume on the, on the receiver here. I'm just going to turn it on. I'm not turning on the belt pack yet. Just the receiver. There's a bit of a pop there. That, that nice 
60 cycle hum, I think, probably based on uh, based on my power grid here. I can't do anything about that. I've tried. I've tried multiple cables plugged in in multiple configurations. That's just there. I've tried to get rid of it. I, I promise you I have, but it's just there. Now, admittedly, I do have the volume fairly high to be able to hear that. And now it's gone. And possibly if you weren't wearing headphones, you wouldn't have heard it anyway. Uh, but it was there and slightly annoying. Um, but now we've got the receiver ready. Let's turn on the transmitter as well with our power button here. Just hit that once. It goes green. And there we are. We're synchronized. And let me shut down the microphone on my chest. We'll just use the cue ball for now. And there. That is the sound quality coming just through uh, this, this microphone here. Um, it's not terrible, as you can tell. It's um, the, the buzz is still there, unfortunately, and there's not much I can do to get rid of that. You hear me playing with the, the volume here to try and do anything about it. Um, but I can't get rid of that, unfortunately, going through my soundboard. And it's very, very possible that, um, that using different equipment, you won't have this issue. I don't know. But with my equipment, doing everything I can to try and get rid of it, that buzz is there and it's not going away anytime soon. Um, and I'm going to leave it there, which feels a bit bratty, I'm sure. But it honestly, it, it's it, to do a proper review of this, you have to be able to hear what it sounds like, regardless of, of what I do to it in post. And don't get me wrong, my room is noisy, so I'm doing some things to my audio in post. But getting rid of this buzz isn't going to be one of them. Or, or affecting the noise of this. Um, let's really quickly let's talk about um, let's talk about some other things. Uh, you'll notice, uh, or as I showed you before, on the side there's some volume controls and a switch here. Uh, first off, we'll note that every time I move my hands even a little bit along this, that sound is more present than my voice is. Um, but the the toggles here are volume switches, so I can turn my volume down quite a bit, or turn it up here on the box itself. Again, this is the, the the target demographic for this isn't the professional sound people who have a mixing board. It's it's people who have a set of speakers and want a microphone to plug into them. So having the volume controls on the microphone makes sense. The switch here is a uh, high power or low power mode. I, I do want to point out, in fact, I'm going to turn off the audio here just a second. And bring back up my lapel mic. Um, the, the switch here, um, on mine at least, uh, does not switch the entire distance of the uh, of the hole that it's in it only goes about halfway to switch between high and low power mode there um and that's just i i mean it's fine it's probably functional i haven't i haven't tested how long the battery lasts on the two different modes uh, um uh, or if it is actually switching properly like it's supposed to it's just kind of an aesthetic thing it'd be nice if that actually went and moved all the way um, while we're at it, let me, let me get this into the, the cube, the, the ball itself, the ball enclosure. Um, and I'll try and do this so that you can see. We have a tab here we have to pull, and then we slip that down inside. And by doing so immediately, we no longer have access to any of the buttons on the, on the body pack, including the mute button, which I'm sure is why there's a mute button on the transmitter itself, in case you have to suddenly mute the, the thing there. But let's switch back over into the cue ball again. And here's how it sounds as you're talking uh, into the ball that you can then toss around. And, and speaking of tossing, I'm going to note something real quick as I toss this. I hit my ceiling there. Um, and you didn't hear that and you didn't hear the whooshing noise because of one of the greatest things about this is that they, uh, knowing that this would be thrown around and passed around, uh, the, the peak or the people who created it, did a smart thing, which is put in sensors inside of it. I assume accelerometers, although they, they weren't clear. But sensors inside of it to shut it off as it's in motion. So that as it's flying, you don't get all that extra noise. And you can kind of hear it cut in and out there as it flew, which is really nice. So, yeah, that's the the, the sound quality from the, the microphone itself, both in and out of the thing and with a microphone plugged in. Um, and uh, I... I don't know where that buzzing came from. I wish I knew how to get rid of it properly in this system, but it was just there. And I don't know why. 
honestly. And so before we go on to our final review, I do have one last thing I need to talk about. This came in the box and you might have noticed it in the foam here is it comes with a really nice lanyard, like super nice. It's adjustable. Uh, the idea is that this would clip onto the, the microphone and then you can wear it around your neck and use it that way. Uh, the microphone also has a clip so you could put it there. But let's be honest, why would you do that when you can put it into a dodgeball? And uh, that's really what this is all about is the idea that you put your microphone into a really safe enclosure. This is really well made ball honestly um, and it's very soft. You can take a hit to the face with this and it wouldn't hurt too bad. I mean getting hit in the face is always bad. Don't aim at people's faces kids. But um, being able to toss this around the way that it is, it is made to do is just a great concept and a great idea in general. Um, other things that I really like about the system are, and I didn't think I would, but I, I've kind of grown to like the, uh, the USB, uh, power inputs, uh, simply because having used those old wall warts, the big black things with the tails hanging out and the stupid round plug that you're never sure which plug is the right one because there are so many factors that make it terrible. Uh, the USB is just so simple and easy. Everybody knows it now, unless they use iPhones, but that's a different uh, topic. But everybody knows the, that plug because it's on their phones or their tablets or some other device that they use. Uh, and so using that, I think, is a good idea. Now, there are a few things that, that do worry me. Um, the audio quality we heard was kind of a little bit less than I would have liked. Um, but again, this is kind of consumer grade, so as long as people can hear your voice, generally that's fine. The... Um, the construction is a bit, I mean, the, those rattly buttons really put me off, as does this switch that doesn't doesn't switch all the way. And that's just a, a, a fact of the way these were constructed and done kind of on a budget. If uh, you back the Indiegogo like I did, you saw all the developer updates as they were having to fly to China repeatedly just to make sure that they were getting things getting things manufactured the way they wanted them to. It wasn't an easy process, and that kind of shows in the final product here. Um, another thing is I'm not a big fan of the 3.5 millimeter outputs. I wish that they had gone with something a little bit more pro grade. Uh, this is this is very consumer. Uh, this is the, that's your headphone output. Um, I wish that they had gone uh, not necessarily the full three pin XLR that would have been my preferred, but even just a quarter inch is just a little bit easier for the professional grade to get into things. Um, but it's still, especially the quarter inch is still consumer enough that most people can still deal with that in a, in a consumer setting. Um, but this is the first iteration of the product and I'm sure as they continue to, to, uh, to iterate upon it, to, to make it better as, as time goes by, that they'll be, um, that they'll be able to, to not only, uh, not only just make it better, in the first place, but also make it a better product for a, a wider variety of things. This is perfect for teachers, uh, whether it's in a classroom setting or like uh, maybe just like a, a, a lecture, um, which is also a classroom setting. Uh, but it's perfect. It's perfect for those little things where it's uh, where you don't want to pull out all of the all of the gear. You just want to plug it into a stereo system and have it work. It, it's great for that. Um, it, so, but yeah, the, the big use cases that, uh, that they've advertised, but also that just kind of, yeah, obviously it works great for that are the lecture hall, but also like for karaoke night or something with your friends, uh, just being able to pass it around and use it for that will, it's, it's really good at that. Um, so all in all, uh, I say if this fits what you need, if this is a, if you need a microphone to pass around that isn't one of those stick mics that you have to have a minder just for the stick mic. If you want something that you can just toss around to have a conversation uh, or a sing along or whatever, this is really good for for what it does. Uh, now the price point might put you off a little bit. The uh, the Cubal Plus that I have is two hundred and seventy nine dollars. Uh, now mind you, the Cubal Plus. Uh, the big thing is that the receiver here can accept two microphones. Notable, it doesn't come with two microphones, but the receiver can accept two microphones. Um, the standard cue ball with a receiver that will only accept one microphone, that's $179. Um, so uh, when you, and for the, the, the thing that you get, a, a wireless microphone with a really well-made uh, uh, dodgeball here, um, that is kind of reasonable. 
honestly, uh, in the, in the world of wireless audio, that's, that's not too bad. Um, so there you go. That is my review of the Q-Ball or the Q-Ball Plus specifically, since that's what I have here. And, um, I don't have a sign off. 